Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And yeah, I think in this video, it's going to be very resourceful for the XRP holders. But let's take a quick peek at the market. It is mostly in the green. Bitcoin is hanging over 41,000 still. It looks determined to maintain over 40,000 and move upward. We'll have to see the total market cap in terms of its size is 1.6 trillion. So we have more money flowing back into the crypto and DeFi, listen to this, DeFi, 12.18% of the total volume is locked up in that DeFi volume. It's going to get to 15% very soon. And I think even higher than that. Keep watch of that. The top gainers in the top 100 projects by market cap is for sure, hands down, Quant, up 33%. I mean, there's nothing even close. Sia Coin follows with 17% up and IOTA 10% up. Actually, there's a few that look strong. The gains are a little bit more modest, like Hedera, Hashgraph, Tezos, Ada, XLM, Zilliqa, Filecoin, but nobody is even coming close to Quant. It has a lot of runway still. All right, yesterday's video was fun for me because I had that aha moment, and it is all about the XRP Army, the most educated according to the Bank of International Settlements. I think it is the tightest knit group, and it goes out of its way to support the most diverse group of humanity in the ecosystem of crypto. I don't think anybody can shake that statement. There are tech lovers, there are analysts, there are researchers, and yes, there are some moon lovers too. It's all good. The community, sometimes called the army, is proving to be extremely val valuable, and it's valuable as a collective, a collective audience to leverage when projects are launching, and especially those that are launching on the XRP ledger. I love the ledger. I really do love the ledger. And the airdrop that I talked about yesterday that was coming, this is the newest one. It comes from this Aesthetis website. And everybody was asking, does it have anything to do with the snapshot last December? No, it does not. You don't have to have been participating in that snapshot that is in relationship or in correlation to Flare Networks. This is totally freestanding, as is Evernote. So the Twitter account of Aesthetis instructs us to set a trust line towards the Elysian issue address. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. Updates are coming soon. This white paper will soon also be released and instructions will be given. So just hang tight. Elysian is a token that is going to be issued on the XRP ledger. And they point out to have this trust line with either the SUM wallet, the XRP tool, or Toast wallet. Those three are mentioned. And if you remember back on June 29th, I tweeted this out where I had entered the unknown and survived. I opened a trust line for the first time on my SUM wallet to swap some XRP for casino coin. And I always covet those first hand time experiences. And Witsa Wind and the team, yeah, they have made this technology of the sub wallet very easy to use. I can do it. I know you can do it too. And, you know, it wasn't so much, although I think Casino Coin is getting to be a very, very interesting project, especially because of Daniel, who is now leading it. Um, and I want to share with you a documentary that just was finished about that. And it is by. Zerpinator. Let me just play the just a quick beginning portion for you. The Isle of Man is a small island positioned between Britain and Ireland. Internationally, the Isle of Man is known for the TT motorcycle races, but the biggest part of the gross national income comes from insurance and online gambling. Hmm. Daniel Keller is the Chief Technology Officer of the Casino Coin Project. For the project, he is moving to the Isle of Man. 
But why? It's the best place to be for what we do. We're required to have two on-island directors. That's a requirement which we need to meet. And if we want to continue the way we're currently working, it's, it's necessary. So in order for the project, for the community, for the people, we're going to move. I love this documentary. It's a short one, a short doc. It's 16 minutes long. There is some really great uh, clip of Witsa Wind in here too. I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. Uh, so anyway, I feel like, yeah, I'm so glad that I did that tress line with Casino Coin because it's not so scary. And don't worry, it's going to be something everyone can do. And if you are uh, wanting to keep track of all of these tokens, well, you can do that at the DeFi standard. This, of course, is Mickey B. Fresh and XRP Patty. They have uh, created this website that will really keep you abreast to all of the developments. This is the XRP airdrop tree. So I will put a link to this too in the description below, but most definitely you're going to be able to follow what's going on with these airdrops on their site. They do a great job. Now, if you are really just zoning in on the Songbird platform, which is going to be the Canary Network for Flare, then you want to use the Flare dot x y z okay and if you uh, are not doing a little bit of your own research you just can't expect to keep up on everything that's going on through osmosis you really do have to check these sources and here is another source for you this is ftso.au on twitter they have a blog and they are keeping track of all of the exchanges that are going to support the Songbird. That is the token that's going to be airdropped for us to use in testing the protocol before the main net goes live for Flare networks. Okay, this is, I think, hopefully really clear. Now, there is another, um, and just, just kind of talking back about that, there are six airdrops happening for XRP holders. The first floor, the first four, which is Flare, Spark Token, the SGB Songbird, Y Flare, which is for the fi Flare Finance Group, and SFLR, of course, through the Flare Finance Group. Those are connected to the snapshots, but Evers, which is part of the Evernode that is going to drop an airdrop uh, and ELS, this is Elysian token. That is for everyone. It's for everyone in the XRP community. All right, so just be sure to lean on XRP Patty and Mickey B Fresh for that XRP airdrop tree and the DeFi standard.com. All right, this is uh, interesting too. <clears throat> in yesterday's video, everybody said that, no, that new attorney that joined the SEC team is a man. It's not, it's a woman. <laughs> really, really, it is a woman. Here you have a card that shows Ms. And I need to tell you that Pascal with the E on the end is common francophone, which means French speaking. It's a given name, the feminine name for Pascal. Okay, so I think we've got it cleared up now. And when you take a look at uh, her uh, directory here, the, she is also, uh, uh, she's, she's got a license to practice law in Florida, uh, and she is also fluent in French and Haitian Creole. Hmm. So I am just positive it is a woman. All right, there is something very bad happening in the US with crypto. It is a last minute addition to an infrastructure bill, which is not in the best interest for the United States. This is Representative Warren Davidson. It's a fantastic video that was done by the Bitcoin Magazine. And he really does say it's time for Americans to jam the phone lines of their representatives. I'm going to play just this quick portion so you can get kind of a feel for what is happening and who's trying to pull a fast one here. It's already an obligation to report, you know, gains and losses on crypto when you fill out your tax returns. But uh, they, they scored this bill to say we're going to find an additional $28 billion 
by driving a reporting requirement. Now, the language is very sloppy in it. Um, and so uh, it literally, the, you would report to the IRS, not just gains and losses, but essentially any activity um, that you would, you know, let's say you make mining equipment and you sold a, you know, a mining server uh, to somebody, you would have to track and report that. You would have to, if you delivered the, if you delivered the package that had the mining equipment in it, if you make hardware wallets, I mean, everything that you think of, um, you would have a reporting requirement uh, to to uh, the treasury. So uh, they believe that because they would track all this information that the federal government would collect an additional $28 billion in tax revenue. But because it's not defined, really not even constrained on, on who would have to report under this, uh, they could have put any number on it because it's just kind of a phantom number. Uh, and so that's how some of this language winds up, winds up in there. And so who put the language in? The Treasury Department did, uh, and that that should concern us because they at, just at the end of the last year, Treasury was essentially trying to kill, uh, you know, personal wallets, digital wallets. Yeah, this is something. If you are in the U.S. and you own crypto, you really need to get involved. Uh, you just can't let the U.S. Treasury slip this in. And I want to tell you that uh, it's so important that America handles this beginning stages of crypto in such a way that it doesn't kill innovation because that's what really looks like is going to happen especially with this bill and i want to play this portion here for you this is katie hahn she's the partner of andreessen Hor horowitz and just two minutes here but man what she says is so important it doesn't matter what crypto it is you are wanting to own or currently own, the innovation here needs to be harnessed because it is a real driver of economic activity. And the devs, the developers, they haven't even begun to tap all of the use cases for crypto. I want you to listen to this, this is important. We would like to hear what Gary Gensler plans to do, but it's important to remember there's a whole big part of this ecosystem that has nothing to do with SEC regulations. I mean, would you think that a digital version of a baseball card or a piece of art, should that be regulated by the SEC? It's not in the physical world, and we don't think it should be just because it's in a digital form and has the word crypto in it or uses crypto architecture. Now, again, I know that some of these are introduced in Hollywood companies, but do you think that the blockchain is a threat to company centralized networks like Facebook, like yeah. Twitter, yeah. like Google? Oh, for sure. I absolutely do think so. <laughs> um, because again, the ethos of crypto is decentralization and it's shifting power away from a centralized view. So I do very much think so. And you know, Emily, I think that's one reason why yesterday you heard Mark Zuckerberg 28 <laughs> times mention the metaverse and the content creator economy. They see this is coming. It's not just tech incumbents. Coca-Cola, I don't know if you got this news, but Coca-Cola yesterday announced it will be doing NFTs on Decentraland. Um, so this is not a fad. Uh, this is very much something that we think is here to stay. And yes, a big tech certainly recognizes this. So talk to me about, you know, do you think Facebook will be the one to lead the metaverse or will it be someone, will it be everyone and not Mark Zuckerberg? Yeah. No way. Well, I think, look, one of the things about the metaverse and, and about crypto is it's open and the barriers to entry are low. And I think one of the things we see is we see tremendous innovation happening outside the United States. I can't tell you how many um, entrepreneurs we're seeing that are experimenting with uh, crypto plays, the metaverse, um, the gaming, the intersection, by the way, gaming and crypto is just, we're seeing kind of an explosion there. We're seeing it happen all over the place, Southeast Asia, Australia, Europe, Africa. Um, really, it's not just limited to the U.S. And that's one of our messages to U.S. regulators is let's harness this. Let's really encourage this important innovation. It's a real driver of economic activity. Yeah, it's very, very important what she said there. And so many of the comments also yesterday talked about Gary Gensler in his new Twitter account, that his uh, new message cards that are designed and his debut on YouTube for the SCC YouTube channel is all about trying to make him look like the good guy. Yeah, it's definitely brand imaging and you know this blue verification dot some people are still i can't believe it saying that this is not the real 
Gary Gensler, but it is. This is the letter that you get if you can't get a verification. It is one that I received because I didn't have the right documents that show that Crypto Eddie is Crypto Eddie. So you can see that Twitter is very strict and they do verify those accounts. And if the account is not verified and they can't be sure that you are reliably linked to the person that you're saying you are, you don't ever receive this blue check mark. So that is that. And I'm going to jump to the fluff, which is kind of funny. This is a company in the background here, Hoshui, right here, that is <laughs> kind of going viral because they're calling it a photo bomb, you know, for the Olympics with the platform for the winners in this venue that was used for the skateboarding. <laughs> they they got all this free advertising. They're a fish wholesaler and retailer. And I just find it kind of funny because they always, you know, you have to pay so much to be like an Olympic sponsor, right? And so this company really bonused and got this huge exposure for just having its building located where it is. And if you want to just see the little bit of a strange side of Japan, this is a woman who's been traveling the 23 wards of Tokyo since 2018, maybe even before that. She carries this little box with her. And on the side here, it says Himitsu, which means secret. So what she is doing is she collects people's secrets. And those are secrets that people would never want to tell anybody. And she then encases it into concrete and after it is encased, she will take any amount of money that you want to give her for that, uh, or not forgive her, any amount of money you want to give her for taking your secret and putting it in concrete. If you give her a penny, then it's just a penny. If you give her five bucks, it's five bucks. She's not, she's not doing that side of the business to make money. How she makes money is that after the concrete is uh, dry, she sells those. <laughs> and she sells those so that you can take a hammer, have it crack open, and you can read somebody's secret. <laughs> it's really, really, really kind of strange, right? But it is a successful business for her. And I think if I read properly, she only takes five secrets a day, I think it is. This is one where someone just says, my secret is I, I don't let my family or friends into my house because it's messy. <laughs> it's really very, very kind of uh, not so serious secret. But uh, if you are wanting to give her your secret and you are out of Japan or you don't see her walking with her little box uh, where she makes the um, concrete encasements, well, you can send her your secret, himitsuya.com. And who knows, you might end up in one of her uh, blogs. <laughs> oh, Japan, funny stuff. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.